Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to take you through a brief overview of the market. I think as exporters and persons involved in such an international business, it's important to understand the country, not just from a trade perspective, but understand what is going on in their economies. So this is just going to be a brief overview of what is taking place in their, in their economies, mostly macroeconomic, business, and trade. Presentation overview. The presentation, as I just stated, will comprise of three parts, a macroeconomic overview of the Jamaican economy, a review of the ease of doing business in Jamaica, and finally, a review of Trinidad and Tobago's trade with Jamaica for the past three to four years. As you can see, the economy of Jamaica is drive driven by a 2.7 million population, which is the largest in the English-speaking Caribbean. Jamaica, for the period 2007 to 2011, showed negative growth, and this restarted again in 2012. As you can see, Jamaica has a relatively low GDP per capita. One of the things that I think I want persons to notice is look at their main sources of foreign exchange. Oh no, I went backwards. Uh. Their main sources of foreign exchange. Tourism, remittances, manufacturing, and agriculture. Remittances accounts for 14.4% of Jamaica's economy, and tourism, they're actually considered to be one of the most tourism-led economies in the region. This means that their economy is almost dependent exclusively on the disposable income of persons in the international community. So if persons are not making money, say in the UK or in the US, Jamaica will see, the, will see a severe blow in their local economies. Just to give a brief policy update on what is taking place in Jamaica, in 2013, Jamaica signed an extended arrangement facility with the International Monetary Fund. Many of you may be familiar of Jamaica's history with the IMF and may actually wonder why they went back. Jamaica actually has a 150% GDP to debt to GDP ratio, which means that 100% of their GDP is debt, 150%. That means that they are actually borrowing more than they earn on an annual basis. Part of the extended arrangement is a structural reform strategy that is aimed at promoting growth and employment, improving competitiveness and business climate, and finally creating a floor for social spending. One of the important things to note for persons who are interested in the Jamaican market is looking at growth, employment, and competitiveness. This means in the next few years, there may be opportunities for your business to actually capitalize on some of the government-led initiatives in Jamaica. Recently, Jamaica had a few tax reforms, which I think is important to note. 2013, they actually considered this one of the largest tax report, um, reforms in Jamaica's independent history. They reformed four policies, and they also revoked a few tax laws. One of the most important ones for you, the exporter, is fiscal incentives and income tax relief. The fiscal incentive um, pol um, reform, in essence, is to become more tax friendly it is giving lower corporate tax, it is giving tax credits to persons who employ more Jamaicans, and it's also giving tax breaks for research and development in the areas of manufacturing and in the area of green energy. So if these are any of the areas that you're interested in, you can expect to see tax breaks as of 2014, January 2014. Another important thing to note is that they're giving tax breaks to persons who attract and engage in large-scale products and pioneer industries. This means that if you have any large-scale infrastructural development in Jamaica, you are expecting a tax break as of January 2014 as well. The next two tax reforms, Customs Tariff and Stamp Duty Acts, would not necessarily apply to us from the CARICOM region because we are a CARICOM member state and we operate under the Common External Tariff. So even though these reforms are taking place, it would not directly affect you, the exporter. What it may mean, though, is that with the revisions to Custom Tariffs and Stamp Duty Act, is that trade with Jamaica may become more competitive and it may be attracting trade from larger countries. So this means that your competition may increase. So it's important to pay attention to the effect of these reforms on the economy of Jamaica in time to come. 
One of the important things to note, as many, who do, many of you who do business with Jamaica, is the exchange rate. As you can see here, Jamaica's exchange rate with the US has been increasing and is expected to increase to 101 in 2014. Actually, my colleague let me know that even when she was in Jamaica at the beginning of the year, it was actually at 105 already. So it has passed the 2014 forecast already. The importance of noting the exchange rate is that once the exchange rate increases with the US, it will make it more and more difficult for Jamaica to finance their debt. This means that their economic hardship may actually be prolonged for longer than they had expected. The exchange rate in essence means that one US dollar in Jamaica is buying less and more and more bundle of goods. So that means that the average Jamaican are not, average Jamaican is not getting as much value for their dollar as they would have gotten in 2007. While this may benefit persons from the US and from the UK, for Jamaicans, it affects their purchasing power. The next thing to note is Jamaica's exchange rate with Trinidad. The exchange rate actually went through a more significant change than that with the US. For you, the exporter, this means that Jamaicans will have less and less money to purchase your goods. The value of their dollar is not as much as it was, say, in 2007. This means that you will have to reassess your strategies to become more price competitive in an economy where people's dollars are worth less. Finally, the balance of payment accounts. One of the important things about the balance of payments accounts is it shows the exports and imports to an economy. An export will be a positive balance on the balance account, whereas a negative would be a negative balance. The fact that the balance of payment account for imports is much higher than that of exports, that means that they are a net importing country. This means that Jamaica imports more than it exports. Their imports actually declined in 2009, as you can see with the exchange rate graph that I showed, because of some of the shocks to their exchange rate, they could not purchase as much as they may have been able to, say, in a 2007. While this has been stabilizing in 2011 and 2012, some of the facts that my colleague would have told me in terms of the exchange rate means that Jamaica may not be importing as much because their currency is not valued the way it used to be. And it may also mean that there may be more financial hardships ahead for Jamaica if they cannot stabilize their currency into the future. Ooh, sorry. All right, the consumer price index. Many of you who may not be extremely versed in economics, this may just look like a pure statistic to you. But for us in the field, the consumer price index actually shows the price that a consumer pays for a specific bundle of goods that economists may consider to be important to them. So these things may be transportation, household expenses, clothes, fooding and beverage, and tobacco and these things. If you can see with the graph, the actual prices of these bundle of goods has been increasing since January 2013 to February 2014. That means prices have been soaring in Jamaica. This means, as I said before, more would have to be done to become more price competitive to be able to compete in this environment. The ease of doing business. Jamaica ranked lower than the regional average in the ease of doing business for 2014 and 2013. In areas such as getting credit, which may be important for persons who may have established business in Jamaica or may actually be looking to do some local business outside of trade or maybe in trade, set up a venture or something of that sort, Jamaica also ranked higher than the regional average. Let me just give a brief overview of the ease of doing business. The ranks here are actually done by country. So the total number of countries that they do the ease of doing business rank for, they rank them out of the total number of countries. I think we are at 189, I can't confirm that. But Jamaica ranked 94th and 93rd, 91st respectively. That means that even though they may be doing well, they're not doing the best. For trade, this is worrying, I have to say because it means that Jamaica, in terms of trade and the freedom of their borders, they are not as liberal as, say, Trinidad and Tobago or maybe Barbados, which was one of the highest ranked in the region. In terms of importing, I think this is very important for you, especially for persons who may not have exported to Jamaica just yet. 
In terms of the processing time, 22 days. That means to complete all of these procedures, it takes 22 days. That takes into account the speed that it takes a customs clerk to figure out your paperwork, to find your document. It was ranked by the Caribbean and Latin American trade as taking 22 days, which is a very considerably long process. These are required documents you would need. As I said, we are a member state of CARICOM, so these documents are quite fewer than, say, if you were exporting to a, a UK or to, say, a um, European Union. Just to close up with trade, Jamaica's, Trinidad, Jamaica's top non-energy imports from Trinidad and Tobago were the following here. As you can see, in 2011, there was an overall decrease in the imports from Trinidad and Tobago. Currently, beverages, non-alcoholic, ranks as the highest, with printing and packaging and bread and biscuits as the fourth and fifth, respectively. As you can see, in 2012, the, um, it was stabilizing a little bit more. It actually was higher, but all of the figures were actually higher than 2012. So that means that, let's just say, growth is, imports is expanding, but ITC trade map, there is a limitation in data for the Caribbean, so I don't want to make any blanket statements in terms of what the actual trend is. And finally, SEW data. This data actually takes into account all of Trinidad and Tobago's exports to persons that we have trade agreements with. As you can see, Jamaica ranked as the highest destination for Trinidad and Tobago's exports in 2014. And one of the things I did was I listed out the top 10 distributors from the SEW data and some of the products that they would have been distributing in Jamaica, just for you to note if you're still not, if you're not in the market, persons that you may be able to contact or so forth if you have any of these products which range from electrical all the way to paper to food and beverage and so forth. Um, next I'm going to um, go into Barbados, but before I do that we're going to have my colleague which will give you all an overview of the um, market survey findings from going into the market. <laughs> 